Yo, what is going on Guardians and welcome back to another Destiny gameplay video. In this video I'm going to be sharing my thoughts and reactions to the uh, reveal stream today talking about the new patch that will be hitting uh, Destiny on Tuesday. Okay, so lots of stuff in here. We're going to comb through it. In the background you're going to see gameplay from uh, a sweat that I was doing uh, yesterday. So this was one of my better matches. I think I ended up with like a 3.0 KD on this one. Sniping in sweats. What? So anyways, it was really good. So hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay. And I'm going to talk about my reactions to these things uh, in, uh, in the background. So let's just go down the list. Okay. Let's talk about uh, shotguns first. Okay. That was the first thing they talked about was shotguns. So they significantly decreased the AA, the uh, magnetism, when you're firing from the hip, which, okay, whatever. Uh, they decreased the in-air accuracy. I think this is probably the biggest deal, is that they removed uh, the precision damage from shotguns. So, um, I'm sorry, they were decreased the in-air accuracy, and on top of that, the um, precision damage from shotguns, because it's really common to go at people uh, from the air with a shotgun, right, baiting doors, jumping over the door, shooting down, getting precision damage from the air to one-hit kill people, right? Very, very common, or to jump up, uh, just in general, just to jump before going for a shotgun kill. Very, very common tactic. Uh, also, Juggernaut uh, Titans, or Titans in general, they tend to skate at you and then uh, shotgun you from the air, okay? Well, that's sort of getting nerfed. That whole approach is getting nerfed because the in-air accuracy and precision damage gets uh, reduced on shotguns now, okay? So, I don't know how big of a deal this is going to be. In the gameplay, they showed the in-air accuracy business. It didn't seem like it was a huge deal. Uh, but it looked like a, a, a small change. So, a little less consistently going to be one-hit killing at... Uh, significant ranges at that sort of the the maximum potential range of uh, those shotguns a little bit less consistently okay that's a big deal so I'm okay with that um, that looks okay to me uh, nothing about that really got me too upset they did also just as a heads up nerf the rangefinder perk a little bit because it was too prominent right everyone wanted rangefinder uh, but now rangefinder actually um, it increases the amount of time it takes to ADS by 25%. I don't like that. I, I would like that if it was limited just to the highest impact and range tier of shotguns. But what I don't like about that is it actually ends up nerfing shotguns that are very balanced. 9 out of 10 shotguns in this game are already really balanced. Um, the ones that aren't, you know, your Matador. Um and not your party crasher archetype that archetype all the other ones are fine they are absolutely fine perfectly balanced weapons in fact they're so much fun to use and i love using i love using my proud spire it's such a fun gun to use hey guess what my proud spire has a rangefinder on it my proud spire just got nerfed to put that into perspective for you my proud spire just got nerfed <laughs> it's like what the heck so i think that is dumb i don't like that i'm not a huge fan of that uh, one one thing that is better about shotguns is they uh, they removed that initial nerf um, that made it so that you moved more slowly when you had a shotgun out. So the that mobility nerf got taken away. You're back to moving at regular speed. So that's the one good thing uh, the, or the one buff that shotguns got. So overall, I think some good stuff there. The rangefinder perk um, nerf I don't like that. I really don't like that. I think that that's punishing. 90% of shotguns that are perfectly balanced um, just so that you can target the 10% or I don't know, I'm, I'm spitballing that percentage there but you get what I'm saying uh, you're targeting all shotguns for the sins of just a couple that I don't like I don't like that approach to, to balancing in general I think that's a really poor approach to balancing is to blanket everything uh, in order to achieve good balance you have to be really nitpicky you have to target the specific things that are causing problems and I think that this is a bit of an oversight. Uh, pulse rifles. So pulse rifles, uh, reduced rate of fire for the low impact pulses like Clever Dragon, uh, the Waltz, uh, Grasp of Malak. Uh, they said 7.7% as the percentage they gave us. It, it translates to one frame, one more frame in between your bursts. You're probably going to feel it, but it's not going to be a huge thing. I don't think that it's going to be a dramatic nerf. Um, they did They did actually, this, is a, this was a good job, they did actually target Clever Dragon. And uh, they reduced its mag size. So now if you're running Brace Frame, that god roll that everyone, not everyone, but most people are using, um, then you're going to be down to eight, 18 rounds in the magazine. That, that basically translates to one kill, unless it's team fire. You're going to have to reload in, in between in every individual kill. 
So I'm okay with that. I mean, Clever Dragon just is appalling to me at this point in the game. It's just so... It had its moment, okay? It had its moment. It can be gone now. That's fine. <laughs> uh, Grasp of Malak just, you know, uh, is a little more balanced than Clever Dragon in general just because of the stat rolls and uh, perks you can get on it. So I'm okay with that. Um, they did also buff the lowest uh, rate of fire tier uh, pulse rifles. They basically increased their rate of fire a little bit. So they can still two burst, but they can do it faster, and that's that's good. They also increase the in-air accuracy of all primaries. So that's interesting. That's kind of cool. Uh, auto rifles, uh, basically the low um, the low rate of fire archetypes got buffed. They increased their base damage. I wish they would have I wish they would have been more nitpicky with the the auto rifles, but they did get a bit of a buff, a little bit of a buff, and they increased the uh, crit. Uh, critical multiplier for all auto rifles from I, th I think it was 1.25 to 1.3 is what they said so a um, little bit of a buff there time to kill will be reduced if you're getting headshots um, I think there's more they could have done there but I don't know we'll have to play it out and see uh, also the in-air accuracy was buffed so I'm gonna be running around with my hard light and see how it feels now uh, after the patch hits hand cannons here's a big one this is a big one right uh, they took away the basically they took away the the bloom mechanic for just your first bullet right your initial accuracy is now pretty much a hundred percent unless you're really far away okay so your your first shot if you aim right it's gonna hit then if you wait for the barrel to reset back down to center and then take your next shot it's gonna be the same thing and have that great accuracy which is wonderful because now all of my excellent hand cannons that didn't have rifled barrel on them will actually hit things now Woo! what crazy so i'm excited about that that's a that's a really good thing and they did the correct trade-off the trade-off is that at range it's going to be it's going to be the poops you're not going to want to use your hand cannon at long range it's going to do like 20 damage to the body 25 damage or whatever so uh i'm okay with that that's a really really good change um you know i think we could have seen some better hand cannon gameplay uh, and that's not intended to be a dig at anybody, but I wish we could have seen some really good hand cannon gameplay in that stream. But we'll have to wait and try it out ourselves. I think this is going to be a pretty a pretty good thing. Um, scout rifles, no change other than the in-air accuracy. So scout rifles, pretty much no change. But you have to you have to consider this: the nerf to hand cannon range is kind of a buff to scout rifles. So you're gonna have a little more uh, incentive to use scout rifles, especially when people are gonna have to go get special ammo with their sniper rifles um, off the spawn, you know, before they can really challenge you at range. So scout rifles may have a little less opposition is what I'm getting at. So scouts could be a little bit better now. Um, in the Crucible, uh, special ammo. This was a big, big deal. The special ammo changes. Uh, and I'm really not sure how I feel about this. Uh, you start with your special ammo just like normal, but if you die, you go back to zero. So you have to get special ammo from crates after you die in order to replenish your stock so you will never respawn with special ammo unless you have a sidearm okay uh, which is cool i mean sidearms are going to get a little bit more love because of that um, special crates spawn more frequently 60 seconds uh, they did reduce the radius um, by i think well, i think it was 25 meters um, so if someone pops the box and you're 100 meters away now you won't get it. You won't get that special. So you got to be closer to the box now to get the ammo if someone pulls it. So uh, just a little bit of word to the wise. Make sure you wait for your teammates to be relatively close by before you pop that special ammo crate. Don't just mindlessly grab it because then you're going to be a tool. And you may be contributing to your own loss by uh, directly uh, taking the opportunities away from your teammates to get special ammo. So if you see X's on, on your HUD and you know that teammates are dead and respawning, you don't need to get back in the fight immediately. Just just wait two, three seconds for a couple of those guys to respawn, then pop the box. Uh, you're going to be doing your, yourself a favor in the long haul by uh, getting into the habit of doing that. So, um, yeah, so in trials, that translates to only getting special ammo on spawn in round one. That's the only round, according to what they told us. That's the only round that you're going to have special ammo for. <clears throat> now we're going to come back to that. I want to talk about trials at the end of the video and how I think the trials is going to be affected by this change. In my opinion, I think trials is a net uh, a net negative, uh, in my opinion. I think we're going to take a step back in the Trials of Osiris um, kind of area. and that's I'll get to that in a bit, and I'll explain that. I don't think it's going to be a huge game-breaking deal, but I feel like we took a step back. 
Uh, moving on to uh, the class changes. Hunters. Hungering Blade for Blade Dancer got nerfed a little bit. It grants you a good chunk of health back and a little bit of your shields, but uh, your shields no longer immediately start regenerating as well as your health. So you get a little less uh, forgiveness for getting a kill. Uh, my thoughts on this is that it's kind of stupid. Uh, this came out of nowhere. This feels like the Gunslinger nerf uh, all over again. Blade Dancer is already... It is already the weakest, one of the weakest supers in the game. Um, so there's a reason it has the nickname Trade Dancer. So if you're going to target Hungering Blade, please buff the super in some capacity. This, I felt like, came out of left field and it had no place there. Um, here, here's my stance on this change and some of the other changes. Is that they started out this stream by showing us graphs and statistics and numbers. And initially, they went off of those charts and gave us new changes that at least reflected, they pointed back to those charts and said, this is where we uh, pulled our information from and why we did what we did. The, my big problem here with the Hungering Blade nerf is that it, it was, the, this may not be the whole story, but this is the, at least the story that we were given. It was one guy that said, he even corrected himself, he said, I did this because I got frustrated at when I was shooting a, um, I did a lot of damage to a blade dancer, and then a teammate of mine just -de 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 -de, walks in and gets killed, and all of my damage gets taken away. Uh, that's all for naught. I understand that the frustration of that scenario, but I do not believe that one man's experiences of frustration justify a nerf to Hungering Blade. That's my opinion on that. Um, throwing knife. When they said throwing knife, at first I was like, "Yay!" And then they were like, "It does solar damage now." So in PVE, that's a that's going to change things. Then I was like, "Oh, <laughs> that doesn't really." Uh, um, yeah. So that, I was kind of hoping that we'd get a little bit of a reversal of the golden gun uh, gunslinger subclass nerf that we got out of the blue a little while ago. I was hoping we'd get a little bit of a reversal of that. We did not. Um, another thing is that they adjusted blink. So this is another nerf to Real Crafty. They are specifically and deliberately targeting Real Crafty. <laughs> so Hungering Blade got nerfed and Blink got nerfed. So uh, the only things that happened to Blade Dancers and specifically is they got nerfed. And I don't think that's right. So Blink uh, was not a problem anymore. Blink has not been a problem for a long time. So now they added on top of that that your HUD gets taken away when you Blink. That's what we saw from... Uh, from the gameplay. They said, go back and watch the gameplay, you'll see what we did. That's what people have noticed. They took the HUD away, so you no longer have a radar when you're when you're first exiting Blink uh, or all of your other HUD stuff. So you can't accurately... I, I guess in year one this would have been helpful when you could just Blink and instantly pull your shotgun up and instantly kill somebody immediately coming out of Blink. But that's not a problem anymore. So this nerf comes out of left field. Again, I feel like they, they teed us up by saying, here are all these graphs and charts. And then they started telling us about these changes they made which to me have no statistical uh, backing for them. So this is another one of those things that I, I, I was a little bit uh, surprised by, a little taken back by. Um, Warlocks, they reduce the Stormcaller melee range. Hey, this is a good thing. Yay. Whoa, yay. One of the good things that happened with this uh, patch. That's exciting. That's pretty cool. Landfall got nerfed. Landfall now reduces the total time in Storm Trance, so you can't be in your super quite as long. Um, this is one of the things that I would have liked to see some statistical backing for. Um, you know, I didn't see, I guess I, I don't really notice a lot of land falling and it being an, an issue. Uh, I think that they're just trying to promote other things in the skill tree, but most people, at least in sweats and stuff, they're not running landfall. So, um, so I don't know about that. Blink, uh, again, the warlocks are affected, affected by the blink nerf. Uh, Titan, this is another big one. Juggernaut, the juggernaut perk got nerfed pretty heavily. So it disables quicker when, you, when you're in the air. So if you're a Titan skating, if you were at max speed Titan, your Juggernaut Shield's going to go away faster. It's going to still be there. It'll, it'll hang up for another second or two, and then it's going to go away. So you can cover some ground while Titan skating with a Juggernaut Shield. That can still happen, but it's just going to go away sooner. That, that's a great change. Uh, also, Juggernaut perk, it can't, it can't be activated when you're in the air. So you can't start Titan skating and then have it pop up. So it's basically just nerfing the aping. There's not, not going to be quite as much just raw aping by Titans uh, anymore. Cool. That is cool. I like this. This is a, a, good, a, good, uh, a good thing. 
So these are the major changes. Um, they mentioned some changes to some exotic weapons, and they even mentioned like Shinobu's Val got a nerf of some of some kind, but we don't know what exactly. So we're gonna see some more of the specifics when they come out down the road. The last thing I want to talk about is the trials environment. So this is one of my biggest issues. Uh, big glaring oversight here was the scory, uh, the artifact, uh, the scory artifact conversation. Okay. Here's my big issue with this, is that this is a notable issue. Uh, there's tons, tons of feedback from the community about it. Uh, they had to have known. They absolutely had to have known this would have been brought up in the reveal stream. And it wasn't brought up just once or twice. It was from the very beginning to the very end, that chat on the on the right-hand side of the stream, Scories was being mentioned consistently, regularly, throughout the entirety of the reveal stream. My problem is that the response, even though they had to have known we would have questions, their response to it was a, a shrug of the shoulders, and then it got pushed to the side. They said, eh, we didn't do anything with it, and then they immediately went on to something else. No, uh, no elaboration, nothing. So my big problem is that if you're not going to touch it, you need to tell us why. Uh, you can't, it feels almost like a, a slight in a way, because you had to have known we would have an issue with it. And we just got a shrug of the shoulders and instantly moved on. So, um, I mean, I feel like this reveal stream, if you're going to do a stream, it has to be worthwhile. So we need, we need the good information. We need uh, not only a list of things that were changed, but we also need to have... Um, sort of reasonings and justifications for changes that were not made that we that you knew would be hot topics and to me this is the the most glaring one another one people are, probably would have wanted to have some information some changes of tweaking to sniper rifles to the flinching uh to the fusion rifles um those to me i mean they were a little bit lower on my priority list they did nerf how much uh clever dragon uh, you know the high caliber rounds is going to flinch they didn't nerf that a little bit so um, you're going to have a little bit less flinch with the snipers. I still feel like snipers are, are relatively okay, but I really honestly just, especially now, the, you have to look at this in the big picture. What happened? Just ask the question, what happened to sniper rifles with this patch? And the bottom line is they got nerfed. So, I mean, it used to be an issue where, I mean, snipers took a lot of pride in which sniper they chose to roll with because they're weighing options in questions like ammo capacity and uh, how much starting ammo I get. Um, so some people like me, I mean, I choose to run the Defiance or uh, my LDR or my um, Effort Eat Spear because of ammo economy. I want to have to worry about that less, and the trade-off with the Effort Eat Spear is way less aim assist. My trade-off with my Defiance of Yasmin is way less impact. Um, so now there's just there's a less... I guess there's l less thinking that goes into that now, and even customizing your armor perks that had uh, ammo capacity uh, perks to them. That's pretty much useless now. You're not gonna, you're never gonna need 24 rounds in a sniper rifle anymore. You're never gonna need that because you're never gonna live long enough to use that ammo. Uh, every time you die, it's gonna go back to zero. So what's the point? So to me, snipers, uh, in terms of their, you know, the net changes here with this patch is that they got nerfed. Same thing with fusion rifles. There's nothing good that happened for them, but ammo economy got brought down. So um, a net nerf to those things basically is what that translates to. I don't like it. So when we're talking about uh, the oversights in this patch, I feel like scories is one. Uh, these other special weapons is another one, but Scorius is the biggest. Trials of Osiris, I think, uh, net, we're taking a step backwards. This is a, a net negative. So without uh, a nerf to scories, and now uh, having the nerf to special ammo, I think that we're going to see... It's going to promote more camping is what I'm getting at here. Because you can... I mean, some people have said... I've seen it on Twitter. Some people have said things like, well, at least now when they camp with scories, they're not going to have special ammo. That's not true. That's not true at all. Um, name for me, please, one map in the Trials rotation where green ammo is not readily available in or near your spawn. There's always a box close to your spawn, and then one or two in the neutral zones. So getting special ammo is not going to be a problem, even if you're camping with scories. 
And a lot of people say, well, what's the big deal about scoring is just push in on them. That's not that easy. I mean, when you're playing against good players, it's not that easy. The advantage goes to the campers because they are being rewarded directly with super energy for camping. Um, so if you're not camping back and hand holding back, then you can't even out the scales there. And if you're going to push in on them, the thing about, about good campers, and there is such a thing as good campers, the thing about good campers is they lock down locations or rooms or spawns where there are only a few different places where you can push in on them, and those places are choke points. They are bottlenecks. They're doorways. They're hallways. So you have to come through a small position. You have to come through a small space to get to them. So on your end, you're pushing through a tight spot, and you have to acquire a target that could be anywhere in this room. So uh, the radar is going to give you a little bit of information, maybe, unless they're crouching. So you have to walk in, find a target, uh, do some solid target acquisition, and then take the target out. The camper, though, all they have to do, literally all they have to do, is watch a door or a choke point. The amount of space that they need to be aiming and focusing on is extreme. It's a fraction of the amount of space you have to focus on as the aggressor. So the camper gets the advantage, and especially when these good campers, quote unquote good campers, are using things like double... Uh, grenade, gauntlets, uh, you know, exotic abilities. They can lock down those choke points very, 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 very easily. Throw a grenade when you see red. By the time that target breaks off and then comes back and re-engages, usually you've got another one cooled down, and if you don't, you're running shinobus, so what do you care? You've already got another skip grenade ready to go. You know what I'm saying? So they just team fire the choke points. The advantage goes to the campers. Um, and they will not push you in without their abilities cooled down, so they won't come out of their spawn unless they get a pick with their grenades or their team fire when you push into the choke point. Then they'll come out, and it's a 3v2 at that point. Or they'll come out when they've got their uh, supers cooled down, and they'll come out uh, guns a blazing, quote unquote. They're not actually using guns, they're using supers. So I think this is a net uh, negative for the Trials of Osiris um, environment. So those are my thoughts about the patch. Some good stuff. Some confusing stuff that doesn't make any sense to me, and then some glaring oversights. So I think some of these things are a step in the right direction. We're going to see a lot more primary gunplay. I think that's cool. I like that. We're going to see some more diversity in primary gunplay. That I like, but then there's just other stuff that I'm just scratching my head. So we'll have to play it out. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping that the meta that we're headed into is going to be better than I think it is. I don't think it's going to be terrible, but I don't know. I don't really know that I think that it's going to be a positive change, though. Uh, overall, I think we have some positive changes, but it's hard to tell uh, preemptively. It's hard to tell if this is a net positive or not until we really get our hands on it. But I'm skeptical. Let me just say that's where I am right now. I'm just, I'm a little bit skeptical. So, give me what you think. How do you feel about these changes? Uh, again, I just wish we had more statistical backing for all the changes, not just a couple of them. That's kind of where I'm falling right now. So let me know in the comment section what you think. I'm very, very interested, and uh, hopefully, guys, I'll catch you in the Crucible.